that I was taking up, all the other commitments, and I felt that I was no longer in a position to update regularly. And the problem with not being able to update regularly is that people, uh, you know, your, your Facebook friends who follow you think that, uh, uh, you, you know, something's wrong with you, right? If you only, if you only update your, mess, your status, you know, once a week, when you used to do it every, every day, then, uh, it, it, you know, you, you, you have to become really selective in what, in what you say. Um, so I think it, it was partly the fact that I felt I couldn't dedicate myself uh, to, to, up, to updating very regularly. Yeah. So that's, that's, I think that's, that's the main reason why I stopped uh, being as active as I was. But I am planning to get back into Facebook and Twitter in a big way. I've set up uh, a, a new Twitter account. Uh, all my colleagues are on Facebook and Twitter, and I think it's now reached a critical mass where if I don't follow what's going on on Twitter, I'll really feel left out. You know, a lot of the, a lot of stories break out on Twitter. A lot of um, uh, a lot of uh, latest happenings um, are popularized and disseminated on Twitter, and I think I really need to be more active in that scene myself. Now, the internet can be dangerous, and I say that because. You can make one mistake, just behave badly in public, just the once, look bad, have a photo taken, and it's there for good. We're well, only 28. We've been very careful. We have Googled you to know, with no particular success, and digging any dirt on you. Great. But you are, that. you are going to make dirt along the way, because that's part of life. What mistake would you like to make? I wouldn't like to make any mistake. You're a history buff, right? Churchill. Churchill, yeah. Up, down, in, out. I mean, he would not be Churchill if he had not won and lost as spectacularly as he has done. You see, I think there is, a, there is another serious angle to this, which is that Malaysians are far more, seem to be far more judgmental than they used to be. See, in Tukar Abdul Rahman's time, I think people were far more forgiving in the flaws of a politician. Tukar Abdul Rahman would drink in public. He would dance in public. He was known to be popular amongst the, well, I don't know if he was popular amongst the ladies, but he certainly uh, made comments that might be frowned upon today in relation to, to women. So um, I think that's, that's, on the one hand, yes, it's, uh, there's always the possibility of, of being caught out in an embarrassing position. But on the other hand, I think in a more serious matter is that why, are, why have we become so judgmental as a society? Why do we expect so much out of, out of our political leaders? Not everyone is like this. I mean, there, there are lots of people who say, you know, I, I don't care if this guy is uh, homosexual, or I don't care if this guy, you know, has lots of girlfriends, as long as they serve the, the public. But I don't think that's the majority view, unfortunately. Well, Tunku Abdul Ram, your Bapak Malaysia, lived in a time, as you say, less judgmental. Now, if he, very hypothetically, if he had had access to the sort of social media we see now, can you envisage what you would have done with it? Or how would he have used it or misused it? If the Tunku were alive today, he would definitely be on uh, Twitter. How would he use Twitter to bring Malaysia together as one Malaysia? He used to write. I would imagine that if Tukar Abdul Rahman were alive today, he would continue writing his column in the Star, and then he would tweet about it. He would give a praise of his weekly column in the Star on Twitter. And I think that's what I should do, actually, since I have a column in the Star. After the break, having to tell the royal line. I did invite um, the alternative media, the online media, to come and cover the installation event as well. But there was a lot of opposition to that from the establishment.